Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be a long one, so please grab your favorite drink, beverage, if you love wine or some sangria, feel free to do so. Pause the video, get your favorite beverage, drink, alcoholic or otherwise, and maybe some hors d'oeuvres to go with it. So in today's video, I will be sharing with you my current ink collection, fountain pen inks, for 2023 and while i am doing the swatching i will also try to answer the tag video that's been going on around our small fountain pen community it's the eight um, questions tag video i first watched it from chris um chris's channel and it was started by these wonderful youtube content creators and i will link all of their channels i will link all of their videos below so if you have time after watching this video go watch their videos so i wasn't able to make videos for my channel and as you can painfully and obviously see i wasn't able to journal for the most part of february so i am just making the most of the unused pages from my Hobonichi A5 cousin. This is the English version. I wasn't even planning to buy this, but because this is the first year that they've launched an English cousin, I decided to, what the heck, take the chance and then painfully realize that I am much better off with an A6. And sometimes the weeks, I use the pages at the back to, you know, journal a bit, doodle and all of that. So I don't need an A5 really, but I want to make the most out of the gorgeous Tomoe River paper by doing some swatching. I don't think I will back journal, if that makes sense. I'm just gonna move forward and make the most out of these empty pages by, you know, just swatching my fountain pen inks. This does not include the inks that I've gotten from the Manila Pen Show. Okay, so I will include timestamps here, but I will swatch them by brand because that makes the most sense to me turning you over to voiceover karen so she can answer the eight questions tag video so while video karen is swatching her fountain pen inks i will go ahead with the first question which is, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? So, even before, I already have this conscious effort not to go near any fountain pens, mainly because of how they were depicted in movies or in cartoons, wherein fountain pens would squirt ink all over, make a mess of your face, your clothes, your hands, and all of that. And me being a lefty, somehow makes it worse but in 2017 while i was playing dungeons and dragons with my friends yes i'm a nerd like that one of my friends good friends micah she's into fountain pens she actually enjoys you know vintage fountain pens she got me one of these Jin Hao demonstrator pens and an ink bottle which is the diamine odinil she just asked me to try it out you know give it a chance but i kind of put it in the back burner it just stayed in my bookshelf for the most part and it just left untouched until the pandemic the you know what happened and by 2021 i was getting into this mental state wherein i was very anxious with my job with the situation and maybe a bit of postpartum since you know I had a baby back in 2019 so a lot of things were playing on my mind and I just had this urge to do something and going back into writing and journaling you know it somehow made me feel better when I was a lot younger maybe I was in my teens maybe 12, 13 years old, I had a lot of journal notebooks. And most of them were filled with, you know, dreams, like literal dreams. I would have these vivid dreams. And as soon as I wake up, I would just 
madly scribble them down. And sometimes feelings, you know, getting at that age of, you know, puberty and dealing with boys, other girls, parents, other adults and all of that. Somehow, journaling helped me cope through those years. And back to 2021, I started journaling and I stumbled upon the word Hobonichi. So Hobonichi was a Japanese brand that is really catering to those who love planning and going back um, analog style, I guess, writing. So right now we have a lot of gadgets that help us, you know, plan our lives digitally. And, you know, having the muscle memory of writing and just jotting stuff down, it just brought a different kind of calm, a different kind of peace, if you may. And with that Hobonichi rabbit hole, it led me to another rabbit hole called Fountain Pens. So I chanced upon a Facebook group which is called the Fountain Pen Network Philippines, and they are more or less intertwined with the Hobonichi users of the Philippines. And they said that, you know, Tomoe River paper is best enjoyed with fountain pens, and that's what got me started. I went back to that bookshelf where the Jinhao demonstrator and the Odenil ink was waiting for me, and boy, it took five years before I had the courage to try it out and I guess they say the rest is history. Something I would also like to take note that 2021, it was around August that I first bought my Pilot Pereira. It was the first deliberately bought fountain pen and I really had a heart a good time you know with that pen but there were also challenges because the ink was quite wet of course platinum oh pilot inks were really really a joy to have but they were you know quite wet and me being a lefty i was just smudging everywhere and even if my pen was a fine it was putting more ink than i wanted so Eventually, I had it sold in the Fountain Pen Palenque and, you know, that got me started into trying out different brands, different nibs, realizing that an extra fine really works well for me. Well, a Japanese extra fine (laughs) works for me. And by December of 2021, when my dad found out that I was into fountain pens, he immediately stood up which was quite a surprise for me that time he went to his room his closet and went out and gave me a Mont Blanc case and there it was in all its glory a 144 Meisterstück it was a pen and fountain pen set and it was given to him in 1993 when he retired from his company but he never really got into fountain pens, so it just stored, you know, for the most part. Until that fateful night in December 2021, he gave it to me, and I immediately fell in love with it. So, I, I guess that was how my fountain pen journey began. It quite started um, not so good, 2017. Someone tried to enable me. But it was actually the love for journaling and, you know, the the fact that writing gives me a lot of peace. That's what really brought me to this rabbit hole called Fountain Pens. The second question is, what are your favorite inks in the beginning and what are your go-to inks now? So in the beginning, I only 
was interested in those that were available locally. Uh, I didn't want to get into that hassle of ordering online and waiting for it and customs and all of that. So, um, Diamine was a good beginner's ink. It was well behaved. It wasn't too crazy with the shimmers and glitter and all of that. And they were pretty affordable for someone who was starting with fountain pens. And if you are part of a network that buys, sells, and trades fountain pen inks. It was really accessible. So, it took me a lot of, you know, research, um, also watching videos on YouTube on the best inks for beginners. And even in the forums and in the groups, Diamine was a cult favorite. Also because of the shade range, aside from the price, it was... It was really an all-around really good um, ink to, to start your journey with. And aside from, you know, the usual pilots and possibly the Lamy's, the much more um, expensive ones, quote-unquote, was really something that, you know, I had to save up on. And those are really the pilot Iroshizuku inks. So... People in the Fountain Pen Network group were saying that if you had some extra money to spare, try a pilot Iroshizuku. And also in the online platforms like Lazada, they were sometimes putting the pilot Iroshizuku on sale or there were promos like uh, buy three and then the fourth one is a bit discounted they were also bundling up with other pens so it was a really good you know incentive to try out pilot iroshizuku and you can't go wrong really with japanese engineered and japanese designed ink bottles so i was really into that and shortly after i got my first mont blanc it was a separate expensive rabbit hole in itself so when i was going to the mont blanc boutiques the sales associates were sharing that you know there's a warranty but it will be void if you don't use a mont blanc ink so that really got me into you know setting aside mont blanc inks for my newly purchased um pens because there was a time in 2022 that i was like buying like crazy it really gave me such a high that I am able to get the trifecta of my Schurstucks. So that also led me to try out their Mont Blanc inks. And right now I've sold a lot of the um, original or their staples, their collection, and only stuck to, you know, the limited edition ones. And now my go-to inks are still Diamine, it's still Pilot Iroshizuku, and it's still Mont Blanc. Um, mainly because I'm a creature of habit. If I love and enjoy something, the more that I buy a lot of, I buy more from that brand. And But now I'm also trying other brands like Ferris Wheel Press, also, our locally made inks like Vinta and Troublemaker. Although, I really don't understand why Troublemaker is so hard to find in the Philippines. The third question is, how have your ink and pen tastes changed over time? 
So if you can see my fountain pen collection, I've gravitated towards demonstrators with my first pen being a Jinha demonstrator. I really like the idea of you know knowing what kind of ink I have in my pen as well as how much ink I still have in that pen. You guys don't know that although I'm sure that my fellow fountain pen enthusiasts would relate when I say that it's so nerve-wracking if you don't know how much ink you have left in the barrel of your pen and if your pen can take cartridges then that's fine you can just pack your cartridges and then just replace it when you run out of ink but for those with piston fillers you may need to bring a vial or you know a whole bottle of ink or just refill your pen all the way up but you know if demonstrators it can give you that comfort knowing how much ink you have left and you know having a pen where you can see all the gears all the parts working together creating that beautiful penmanship with the way you write with the way you hold the pen with the angle that your nib meets the surface of your paper it's just like music music in terms of writing and it gives character and i really like that the other kind of pens that i'm really drawn in are mont blancs mainly because of my dad while he wasn't a fountain pen enthusiast he gave me a Mont Blanc and I guess that's how it related to me. That's how I got attached with the brand and the fact that it's easily accessible, meaning there's a boutique here in the Philippines. There are accessible service centers with international warranty. There's just that peace of mind that I can get. And if the pens and the accessories are not available, you can purchase them online with Hong Kong being the nearest store and in a few weeks, maybe two weeks, it arrives safely at the comfort of your home. When it comes to inks, I've always gravitated towards blue inks and it, the range just differs from your blue blacks to your um, medium or cobalt blues. I'm not really a fan of sky blues, mainly because it's so hard to see it, especially if you write with extra fine nibs. I try to avoid shimmer inks unless they are really, really pretty, and I just have to load it up in a medium or a broad nib fountain pen. And I know I don't usually reach for that, so I have some glitter and shimmer inks, but I think uh, most of my collection is really in the blue shade. And until now, um, it's still in the blue shade. I mean, turquoise sometimes leans towards the bluish shade, but um, I'm also getting a lot of fascination in the green shade of turquoise. So I guess it just depends on the brand because some turquoises are leaning towards green, some are leaning towards blue, so it's just a matter of, you know, your preference. Question number four, are there inks and pens that you have yet to try but would like to? I'm at this point in time where I've hoarded one too many ink bottles and I know it's gonna go beyond my lifetime. I have no idea how I can 
you know, use them all up in terms of writing. Yes, I can use them for swatching. It's a really good excuse to use up a lot of ink. I'm not very artistic. I don't do, um, you know, painting using fountain pens. I can try, but I don't think I have the patience to do that. So with the recent uh, Manila Pen Show, I have bought more inks than, than I would have comfortably wanted. <laughs> but it was really good because there were some exclusive inks and you know I would regret not getting and trying them out. In terms of pens, I think because Twist B comes out with a lot of new releases, um, Sometimes I go through their website and then just check, but nothing really catches my fancy. Other pen brands that I don't have but would like to try are the Viscontis, the Auroras, the Benus, the Narwhals. Um, I still don't have those mainly because of the price point and maybe accessibility. The ones that I like aren't really available yet uh, locally through retail distributors and I don't want to try pre-love at this point in time. In terms of um, ink brands that I haven't tried, um, not really. I'm at this point that I'm very happy with my collection. I think I have more than enough. Question number five, what is your holy grail pen? For me, I define a holy grail pen as something that is, you know, not attainable, something that is out of your reach, but at the same time, you keep on yearning and aspiring for it. And it takes the right circumstance, it takes the right kind of luck to be able to get that holy grail pen so for me it's not just a matter of price it's not just the money it's also the availability it's the opportunity when it was presented to you so for me that's a holy grail pen and what would that be i would think that it would be a mont blanc le petit prince Maybe a solitaire or a duet. Um, could be an aviator or a planet. So something that's related to Le Petit Prince because that story resonated so much to me. We read that book back in high school. I remember it was fourth year and it was one entire semester that we were asked to read a book and make a report out of it. But I think I took a step too far and I really got serious with the book and the themes that it laid out. Um, even going so much as doing research on the author who used to be a pilot and that's where he got his inspiration for the story. The story also took on themes of love, but it's not the love at first sight, falling head over heels, but it was the kind of love that developed over time because 
you invested time, you put time on it, and the memories that you made, the routine that you had together, it's what created that kind of love and bond with you and your significant other. So in the case of the prince, it was the fox. And throughout that time, that you develop that kind of affection for each other, you find things that are, of course, invisible to the eye and can only be seen by the heart. So that really, you know, touched me <laughs> emotionally and it made me realize that, you know, love is not just a feeling that you get in an instant. It is something that is developed over time. And it is an effort that is made by two people. Two people who made that conscious effort and choice to make time, to find time for each other. And I guess that's also the story of me and my husband who have been together for more than 10 years but we're married for almost 6 years. And the kind of love that we have is something that we cultivated together the both of us we worked on it we fought for our love and maybe that's why it, the holy grail pen is something that's linked to mont blanc and le petit prince it's not anymore um produced as far as i know by mont blanc there are still some retailers that carry it brand new but it would probably be a rare a rare instance that it would be accessible to me at least here in the Philippines so for me the the sign that would lead me to purchasing a holy grail pen is that moment wherein I go to that boutique in Mont Blanc maybe somewhere in Europe while I'm on vacation with my family I just go into the Mont Blanc boutique and there is a brand new Le Petit Prince solitaire pen in the fine nib and they will voluntarily exchange it for the extra fine and they will give it to me, they will sell it to me and I will get a tax refund. That is a holy grail scenario for me and I know that won't happen. That won't happen in the next few years maybe in the next 10 years that won't happen um, there's so much a lot going on in my life and that's really not something that I want to pursue actively and maybe put my family <laughs> through that through that experience <laughs> so yeah that was a long-winded story Question number six, how many pens do you currently own? So as of this video, I currently have 55 pens. And that is 54 pens too many. <laughs> and I really haven't done an active, you know, count. Maybe when I do my next fountain pen collection, you will see that the most that I have are Twisbees. I really love collecting Twisbees. They fit so perfectly in my hands. I love demonstrators. I also love my rose gold nib collection. 
and most are in the extra fine nib which is perfect for me it's chef's kiss for a left-handed person i also have a sizable mont blanc collection that i surprisingly built up for the most part of 2022 and i have the trifecta of the 145 and the 146 meaning i have the platinum gold and rose gold trims i also have limited editions like the sir arthur conan doyle the le petit prince which is a gift for my husband and i also have a vintage mont blanc 320 also in the extra fine that i got from the fountain pen palenque i also have the pretty uh, bonheur which is like a white resin with these nautical blue and white stripes and i really love that it's just a bit hard to to use for long periods of time because of the big step down um, near the grip the next candidate in terms of quantity is my pilots so i really love pilots they're hard workers they will be your workhorse they are totally dependable they're also very easy to clean and you will not be afraid to try your more bolder inks like your shimmer inks and your iron gall inks so they are really the ones who i really put through the ringer so to speak i also have uh, four pelicans and most of them i was able to acquire through the fountain pen palenque only because it's so so expensive well, who am I <laughs> to judge? I have a Mont Blanc collection as well. And the rest are, you know, it's a mishmash of Sailor, Platinum, Lamis as well. Can't forget your silent workhorses, the Lamy Safari. So those are the pens that I have. Question number seven, do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know that you have reached your maximum? Personally, I don't put a limit or it's not something that I consciously think about when it comes to pens and inks. I regularly go through Instagram I go through our fountain pen network, I go through the fountain pen palenque, and if something, you know, sparks my interest and it's in the extra fine nib and the price is right, I may just, you know, negotiate, talk to the owner for a bit, and then if everything falls into place, then I purchase it. But as of now, I'm not actively looking for any pens with the 55 pens that I currently have and 20 that I currently have inked. It's really a lot 
<laughs> it's more than I can chew currently. And I don't have this spidey sense or that nagging feeling for me to get a brand new pen. And the same for inks because I came from a high from the Manila Pen Show. My, my utility is full. I'm not really craving and actively looking for an ink. Um, only because I would probably get a or a, an ink in the blue shade or in the turquoise shade, which I'm currently happy with what I have. And for me, this collection um, came from a hobby that is mostly driven by the heart. I mean, it's not something that I will, you know, put logical thinking and system and purpose because that won't be a hobby. A hobby is something that your heart drives. <laughs> if that makes sense. For me, my heart is at peace. My heart is happy. It's full. It's overflowing when it comes to fountain pens and inks. And I know that not a lot of people will agree with me because some people tend to be systematic they want to be logical in their choices. They want to be purposeful and functional. And I really respect and admire that. But for me, if I put limits like that, it won't feel like a hobby. It will just feel like any other activity in my life. For me, I can be happy with 20 pens, but who am I kidding? I can be happy with my extra fine nibs. I know I have a lot. And logic dictates that you just need one or two the second one being a backup but you know that's not how it happened Question number eight. Consequently, what would you do if another pen or ink came along? If that pen or ink really sparked my interest, it is accessible, the price is reasonable, then I might get it only because I live in a country that has a very penabled community and Maybe part of me being a hoarder of inks is because there is an outlet or a way for me to get rid, quote-unquote, of my fountain pens and inks that don't, you know, make my heart sing anymore. I can just sell them in the palenque for a reasonable price and I know someone will get it in the next few days. We will negotiate. We will make that sale and then I will happily send the pen and the ink away to its new owner who will give it a better home. So for me and my community, it's very easy. It makes us, you know, be more be more impulsive, I guess. <laughs> it gives us the opportunity to be impulsive and maybe that's what fountain pen communities are for. <laughs> and that is it you guys. Those are the eight pen questions that 
I happily and gladly answered. I really had a lot of fun talking about um, getting into the hobby and where I am in terms of, you know, fountain pens and inks. So, as this is a tag video, I am tagging anybody who would like to join and maybe share a bit of their lives and this crazy hobby that we call you know our safe haven our safe space and if you guys are still watching and listening thank you so much i really appreciate it i hope it's not too much i hope it's not a sensory overload that you are seeing me uh, doing swatching videos while listening to my fountain pen journey and where I am in this journey but I hope you can also find time to share your stories with me in the comments below or tag me in a video I would really love that if you have enjoyed this video I hope you can give it a thumbs up and may I also ask if you can comment down below your favorite fountain pen inks or at least the ink that you're currently using and loving um, yeah let's not forget as this is also a video on ink swatching but I am seeing that I will be adding more swatches in the next few videos on this one I will also try to link down below the other eight pen questions tag videos that I've watched on YouTube hope you can also support other content creators and if you've created your own eight pen question tag please send the link in the comments down below and i will be more than happy to watch your video thank you so much for watching i will see you in my next video bye guys